Good morning, good morning. What a glorious day. So much to be thankful for. Such blessings to enjoy. Good morning, Patty. Good morning, Whitney. How awesome a day is this. Um, I'm not really hearing the birds this morning. I wonder what they, they took a week off or something or a day off. It's kind of crazy. I'm FC Farwell. I'm a minister. I share life keys, life truths that release the kingdom life in you so you fulfill your God-given purpose, your God-given calling, your God-given destiny for your life. Hope, good morning. Okay, what a beautiful day this is. Uh, it's a little chilly though. It's like the first really fall filling day. I, don't know, I haven't kept track summer, winter, what you know, what season we're in. Obviously, we were either in fall or we're still in the end of summer. Morning, Amy. Blessings from uh, Spain. Would it be Betty or Betster? What's your first name? Uh, hope you're just, you, you know what? Hope is a beautiful name, a beautiful name. I hope you love that name because it's just, it just brings joy to my heart to think that we have hope in Christ. And so your name is a reminder of the goodness and faithfulness of God. And it's Betty. How incredible is that? You know, I have a lot of new followers following out there. So replay viewers and everybody appreciate your follows. One of the things I like to do is I am very willing to follow you. Try to catch some of your scopes that you do. If you're not broadcasting, I'm not usually going to follow you because there's, I, I don't make a connection there, right? So if you when you start broadcasting, if I see you're broadcasting, I'll follow you and try to catch some of your broadcast and the life and things you share. Each of you, each of you have something of value to share with our world. Each of you, as every joint and every part supply from the body of Christ, has a vital and necessary function. Yeah, I'll go to just a screen name. <laughs> has a necessary and vital function in the body of Christ. If we took anything, if you took a part off your car, a tire off your car, it would not do very well. It just wouldn't go anywhere and it's just missing a little old tire. Well, I tell you, in the body of Christ, the value of your life is like that, that it is just not complete and it doesn't work like it's designed. If every part isn't doing their part, every part involved, every part speaking life and blessings, right? Okay, so my uh, app didn't update my tea. You know, this is my tea. I know, and coffee's okay, okay? Coffee is cool. My little thing is Jehovah Java, the Lord our stimulant. <laughs> okay, I know that wasn't good, and you're all like, uh, yeah, we're done with that, right? So let me pull up my little uh, Bible app. I use this Bible Plus thing out of the iOS store that I really like. Yeah, yeah, laughing at me, right? So this would be in Matthew chapter 11. Okay, Matthew 11. And this is a verse we probably all know and love and appreciate. And it's just a simple truth, except that it's not there. <laughs> Oh, well, I think I know the verse. I don't know why. Okay, maybe I should know my Bible better, right? Know my Bible better. You know, with the grace and love and mercy of our God, the life that Christ gave, we have completeness in him. Our completeness is not here. It is not here. This, this body is decaying. It's going to die. But the life of Christ in you and I is what makes the difference to live life to its fullest. Good morning. Still in there. Okay. Yeah. If you put your first name in, I'll greet you by name. Welcome. Thanks for dropping in this morning for, and I was telling you my morning tea is blueberry. Like I said, it's coffee is okay. Pam, good morning. Wow. Everybody here, you're just such a blessing to spend a short morning here together. So the word is, the word has to do with, uh, you know, rest, resting in Christ, resting in our strength. In a GMGB, good morning, God bless to you. Um, so my mind is working and I'm like, come on, what is wrong here? Okay, get it going. Um, and, the, you know, we know in the world we'll have tribulations, we'll have pressures. It, he tells us that, but in Christ we find rest. In him we find strength. So he says, here's the verse. 
Come unto me, come to me, come to me, all of you that labor and are, are heavily laden. You know, we're beat down with the burdens of the world. We're, we're loaded with all these things that need to be done. So come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you know your job, your family, all the things in the world, they can't give you the rest that will build the strength of the Christ life in you. It's only in Christ we find the rest. Whitney, good morning. And thank you for the shares. Thank you for the hearts. Glory to God. <laughs> I had, you know, I do have weird thoughts. I have weird thoughts. Uh, I thought, so if each heart was worth a penny, yeah, this is really strange, right? You're like, oh uh, yeah, that, that pastor FC, he's kind of different. So if every heart was worth a penny, I think there's some of you I would probably owe a, maybe <laughs> at least a hundred dollars to, maybe a couple hundred dollars to. So may God reward you richly for the hearts that you're giving for him, for the king, because that's the one we're thankful for. That's the one who gave his life for us. So in First John, what a great record. And you know, First John, no, oh, you know, that's one of those old words, you know a lot. And I'll say ah a lot. And I look at my replays and I go, I need to improve on my speech. I know it's not so great, but we're looking to God. We're not looking to our ability, our weakness, our failure. We're looking to our Lord, his strength, and our God who sent his son to give us life. And so you know what that life means? That you're incredible because the God in Christ in you is the hope of glory. There's where the glory rise. The glory lies, it is, is the God in Christ in you. So I'm going to go to First John. Uh, I'm in four, and uh, was thinking about, about thinking about rest and strength. In the world, because of the turmoil and things we go through, we are beat down and we are weakened. And you come home, and all you say, maybe you sit down in front of the TV or whatever, and it, it just, you're just done. You just want nothing else to do. And yet, Christ is in you, giving you the strength of God. You have this divine connection that makes your life so incredible and the world doesn't see it. It's not gonna see it because they're in darkness and they're so much in darkness when you bring the light, it blinds them and they don't get it. It doesn't communicate, it doesn't connect with them. The people are so used to the darkness when truth comes, it, it they have troubles with it. It's kind of like this, I heard this years ago. There was a guy riding a bicycle. This is an example. There was a guy riding a bicycle, but his handlebars were crooked. His handlebars are crooked. This is older. There might be a few of you that remember this. His handlebars is crooked. So he was so used to riding the handlebars crooked. Now, some nice neighborhood boys, now usually we say nice neighborhood boys. Well, we might have to question that. Uh, Vicki, good morning. Wow, surprise. It's not a replay for you. So welcome. So the neighborhood boys took the bicycle handles on this bar, or on this bike, the bar, yeah, and straightened it out. So they thought this would be a nice thing. Bless him with straight handlebars. So they loosened it, adjusted, tightened it. What happens? The kid gets on this bike. Yes, yes, GMGB, God's bless and God's best. So he gets on the bike and he doesn't go 20, 30 feet and he crashes. He crashes. Everything was set right on the bike because he was so used to doing things in error that when things were made right, he couldn't walk in the truth. He couldn't walk, you know, or he couldn't walk. He couldn't pedal that bike and keep going straight. So sometimes people's lives are so kittywampus, so messed up when you bring the truth, it messes with them, but it messes with the, that their mind has already been messed with. It's filled with darkness and Christ came to give them light. You and I light. See, it's about getting over ourselves because it isn't about us, it's about Him. It's about Him and Him living in us. And you know what the biggest freedom we sometimes need in life, probably the greatest freedom, is we need free from myself, yourself. We need to be free of ourselves so the Christ life can live in us. This incredible life of uh, God living in us. There's a, if you saw, I don't know if you're on my Facebook page, FC Farwell, you saw that there was, a, I did a scope a few days ago, last week was an evening broadcast, and there was a lady that was healed of a, uh, 
her diabetes runs in her family, and for a number of days she'd have even pain in her leg. And she's watching a replay of a scope when I had spoke healing over someone's leg, and she responds, she was totally healed, and she's still healed. And she's in the broadcast here, so what a blessing to be connected, because we're all, all we are is a signpost that, signpost that points each other to God, that we look to God, we're looking to Him, and so it's more, we're like light switches. We plug people in that connect to God, and we just hit the switch, and we let God do what He wants to do. So, in 1 John 4, I said earlier, 1 John 4 is about, I believe, and I stop. 1 John 4, correction, 1 John, 1 John. 1 John is about our fellowship with God. It isn't about coming to Christ. It is our fellowship with Him. In 1 John 1, he tells us that uh, truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, and then it's also with one another. Prophet Roderick, I tried to watch your uh, broadcast, and there's no sound on it, so I don't know uh, what the deal was with that. The blessings to you. So I don't know what the deal with your that broadcast was, but I tried twice to watch it and wasn't able to. Well, I mean, I could see what was happening, but I couldn't hear anything. So I don't know if it was a periscope issue or the sound was turned off or what was going on. So we, this is verse 16 of 1 John 4. We're speaking about fellowship, connecting with our Father in union and fellowship for the love connection we have with Him. And that, that, that His love is what brings the connection. His peace, His rest brings strength. So, let's see, I'm on verse 16 of 1 John 4. So we have come to know. We have come to know. That means we know, right? We know. That's so good. So, Robert, good morning. Welcome, welcome down there in Florida land, flat land and the humid. We've got the humidity. Humidity, we're a little less flat than you are. But I love how you can, in a couple hours you can go from the east coast to the west coast, get two different ocean experiences. Okay, there, you're all like, FC, get on track, or we're on vacation out of here, right? So we have come to know and believe that the love, the love that God has for us. Have you come to know, have you come to an understanding of the love God has for you that by sending his son, that your ransom, the price for your life was beyond measure, but he, to you, his love for you was measureless, and he was willing to pay the price, the, the full cost of your life and mine so that you and I could be restored, connect with him, and that the life he intended for Adam and Eve could be restored to us. The rulership that uh, Matthew 4, the devil, the devil took from Adam because Adam basically did mutiny and handed over his rulership of the earth. He, he, Adam and Eve were to rule the earth. Okay. <laughs> Connect. Make sure, what was that old saying? Make sure your brain cells are connected before you put your mouth in gear. Make sure your brain's engaged before you put your mouth in gear. I seem to be having shifting problems this morning. So we have come to know and believe that God, the love that God has for us. Have you come to know that? God is love. If you want to define love, if you want to understand what love is about, we have to come to God and find out what he says love is. And his love is he so loved the world that he gave his son. What has the world done for you? Truly, what has the world done for you? Come on. If you work a company 10 years, 5 years, maybe even a year after you're at that company, you may be forgotten. You every All the work you've done, it's gone. They probably aren't going to care. Maybe it's a family business or something. It's different, right? They're not going to care. But God so cares that he will never forget your faithfulness, your love, and everything that you've done for the kingdom and for him. He will never, but in fact, he will reward you throughout eternity. That's better than any retirement plan this world has. So God is love. Whoever abides, continues in, is steadfast in love, abides in God, and God abides in him. By this, this is verse 17, his love is perfected in us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment, because of his love, we can have confidence. Do you know why? 
because the believer was already judged righteous in Christ. See, if you, well, let's read it because it actually tells us this and we kind of miss it. Because, so in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are you and I in this world. As he is right now, Christ seated at the right hand of God with all authority, dominion, and power given to him over the church. He's the head of the body. He's our head. He's the one we look to. We're not looking to a man. We're looking to Christ. As he is, so are you now in this world. If there's a lack, it's only in the connection God's made, not recognizing who we are, and walking out the Christ life of who God has made us to be. So welcome back, Betty. I hate to have you back. So listen to this. Oh, it's so incredible, these truths, that when they start to permeate in our thoughts, we start to hold them fast, hold fast the faithful word. When we hold them fast, it breaks the bondage of the world telling you're a nobody, you're no good, your life is worthless, it'll never amount to anything. All those lies are broken because of God in Christ in you that gives you the power line, the light and lifeline connection to your father. Good morning, Monique. So you have this incredible connection with your father. Learn about that connection. Put it in your mind. Walk that baby out because you are God's new creation reality and everything that was stolen away and Adam is restored to you and more because Adam lost it as a believer you are sealed in Christ you can't lose it because the spirit can't sin and it's the spirit that's going to heaven flesh and blood that sins it's not inheriting the kingdom of God so you're not going to lose the spirit because it's eternal life and First Peter's one of the first Peter says it's seed the seed that God has put in you the Christ life in you that seed is incorruptible see if it could corrupt it could decay you could lose it and all you can't lose it because it's Christ in you the hope of glory and if you could lose the glory it wouldn't be a hope okay so your spirit's going to heaven and you're getting a new body a perfect body new mind new brains new everything and that life and that body will be incorruptible because the Leviticus 17:11 says the life of the flesh is in the blood and the life you'll and you have God's spirit now you have the token it says the down payment when Christ returns you are transformed in an atomus an atom in a moment of time like the splitting of an atom when you are transformed in Christ that new body comes in and it can't corrupt it can't decay it'll have no weakness you'll have all the ability that Christ had he walked could go through buildings he could be one place at one time in his resurrected body and another all that ability is yours in Christ receive it so this verse 18 there is no fear in love how much fear in love none zilch zippo l nothing no fear in love for fear but perfect love perfect God's love which is perfect love I want to know your perfect love I come to his word he sends his son and he sends his spirit and he gives eternal life what I mean if you had a zillion billion dollars in the bank it wouldn't hold a hairline crack or scratch or whatever to it, it would be crumbs crumbs to this life this love this Christ in you incredible truth life freeing you are loved I don't care what your circumstances are how difficult it looks what challenges you face you have the love of God focused like his searchlight upon you to lift you to places of victory life and freedom BAM that's that's us that's who he is in us if we can just get it you'll be a world changer you will raise the dead you'll cast out devils you'll heal the sick people will get born again you will be setting captives free you'll be liberating the ones that the enemy has held behind closed doors for fear for worries for doubts so there's no fear in love but perfect love cast out fear for fear has to do with 
punishment. You know what this punishment is? It's judgment. If I think it's ju- it's a synonym to the other word or that we what is it? Judgment. How do you say it? Let me look back here. Uh, that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. If I believe God's going to condemn me and say, you're no good, you're not worthy, whatever, I have fear of his judgment. But in, since I've been judged righteous in Christ, Christ God is going to look, he looks at me now through Christ, and he's going to look at me then through Christ. He's not going to say, you were a failure, you blew it here, you carried wrong thoughts, you looked at a woman and had a lust, you know, you you took something that was somebody else, you were angry at a person. What's that say First John? It says, like, if you're angry with your brother, it's like a murder. Murderer. Oh my gosh. So if you've ever lusted, if you've ever had anger at someone, if you've ever lied, you are worthy of death. I'm worthy of death. I've done all three, but I am set free. You are set free, made free, complete in Christ, in Him. You, Your new life is in Him. If you want to live your new life, find out who you are in Christ. That is who you are you are. So fear has to do with punishment, has to do with judgment. Because if I think God's going to judge me one day for everything I've done wrong, that he's wiped the slate clean in Christ, why would he do that? Why would he wipe it clean and then want to bring it all back up? That That's not a righteous God. He's a righteous God. He's redeemed you from the curse of the law. He's not going to put you back under it. You are free in Christ, and it's all wrapped up in loving God with our heart, soul, mind, all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. And the whole law, the whole law is filled, completed in that love of God in Christ Jesus to you and me. It is filled. I, oh my gosh, we're set free. So no fear in love. Perfect love cast out all fear, for fear has to do with punishment. Whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. He first loved us. And now we can love. You can go forth, lay hands on the sick, and they recover. You don't even have to lay out your hands on the sick. You can speak it over them. You know, I'm going to tell you something. Listen to this. This, you're going to be like, I never thought of it that way. So, Patty and Patty here, right there. Yes, you can. She is out doing this. She is out doing the miracle works of Christ. You want to connect with someone, great connect with Patty. There's someone right there who, uh, her testimonies on Facebook of the miracle life that, of the Christ living her are just blowing the doors off the enemy's camps. You and I are, yeah, I've said it, devil tormentors. He you think he's beating on you, you are beating him. It's He's the one groveling on the ground, eating, licking up the dust of the earth in misery because of the love and Christ life that you live. So God is love, and his rest is his strength, and his perfect love casts out all fear. And when judgment comes, I don't need to fear because I'm going to be found righteous in Christ. None of Everything that I failed and will be burned up. I believe it's Corinthians. I should have looked it up the other day. It sort of came up that that is burned up everything that has no value and in everything that has value you will receive eternal rewards for. On earth, everything is temporary. With God in connection with him, it is eternal. And we have so much to look forward to. But you go forth. I was going to tell you, right? I didn't finish this. So thank you, Father. Thank you. Is that you? greater works than Christ he healed the sick. He cast out devils with a word. Gone. Out. By. Be free. It didn't take a minute. It didn't take hours for him to walk in authority. He set captives free. How could you take a multitude and take an hour with them and set them free? You'd be there for weeks. He did it in an evening. I'm telling you, he spoke the word and they were free. He knew who he was as God's son. Do you know who you are as God's son and the authority given to you? So and th- so, the idea here, I'm going to get to it. Oh my gosh, I've taken five minutes to get to this one point, is that you don't even need to say a word. Just your presence. Okay, we'll let that guy fly over. <laughs> it's a flyover or fly by. A little plane there. 
just your presence can set the captives free. The Christ life in you, when you, you know who you are in Christ, just your presence without saying a word can heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and so much more. Just your presence. There was an account of Smith Wigglesworth. He was in, I think it was a train. I, I can't remember where it was, but I think it was a train. And the presence of God was so powerful on him, people were going to the floor saying, your presence convicts us of sin. And as I remember, he didn't say a word. There's another one with Charles Finley, where he went into a factory and the people's hearts were convicted because of the light, how it lived in him. And I don't remember that he said a word. I did an account, I, at least I heard, uh, I was listening to a healing class at Bethel in Redding, California. And Chris Kadosher was sharing an account. He had been reading the records about uh, the woman with the issue of blood. And there was a woman who, in this fellowship, he was teaching this class on healing with an issue of blood. All she did is walk in front of him, by him. He said nothing. She immediately, as that woman in the Gospels, knew that she had been set free. And she got a hold of him and said, I just walked by you. And in that presence of God that was there, I was set free from an issue of blood I had. That's how powerful you are in Christ. Greater works, that's your baby. Because God determined that when Christ would go up and seat at the right hand of God, you would crush the enemy and his works. So stop seeing yourself as a defeated one, a lacking one. The fullness of Christ in you is greater than any difficulty, any challenge, any weakness you have seen in life. So I speak life over your body right now in Jesus' name, in Jesus Christ's name. Christ Jesus, the risen Lord and Savior, I speak life over your body. That if you have tumors, that tumors leave. That it, it doesn't matter. I don't care what your issue is. I'm speaking life in agreement with our Father over you. I don't even need to speak it because it's already done in Christ. See, what's been completed in heaven is released on earth. It says that which is, you know, what you loose on earth, uh, loose in heaven, bound in heaven, you know, bind is bind on earth is bound in heaven. The truth of the scripture is what you loose on earth, what you free from captivity has already been freed in heaven. What you bind has already been bound in heaven. So that's why you can do it because it's like the law was set in heaven, written in uh, written in God's heart, let's say, written in his tablets of truth. And so as you go forth, your life will change situations. Circumstances will change just because you're there. But we choose to speak life because we know it's the life of God in Christ and you and I that connects that light and lifeline and power line to our circumstances here on earth. So, oh my gosh, people, we've got it so good. We've got it so great. See yourself seated in the heavenlies because it says you're seated there, that you were transported into the kingdom of God's dear son, that you're looking down on the circumstances of life. You're not look. God, help me. No, you're with him, connected right with him at his right hand, and you're reaching down from there to people and lifting, lifting them up to their high calling of God in Christ, to their God-given destiny, so that they can now be lit up with the light of God with a vision for life, and they can go forth with victory already assured. It says we've been, we're have been we being led in tri with Christ in triumphal procession over the enemy. Now, thanks be unto God, which always gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That victory is when the victor, where the battle would happen, the victor would go in, take the spoils and bring them back captive and the enemy will be following in that pr procession and that's about storming the gates of hell in the sense that uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against Christ and the kingdom that God is establishing through him. If they're not going to uh, 
stand against Christ, they cannot stand against you. That triumph is assured. Your it's the victory. I gotta think of another one. I'm gonna look up some synonyms for victory. <laughs> it's complete. It's done, brothers and sisters. You are an incredible being, a new creation in Christ. Go forth. Live this life step by step. Don't try to figure it out. Don't worry about tomorrow. The manna provided for the day they needed it. They didn't need it for tomorrow except the day of rest. God will provide two days of manna. Just go collect a little extra. The people that collected extra, it corrupted. If you try to build treasures on the earth, they're going to corrupt and waste. And your joy level is going to be going, ooh. God's intent, your joy level goes to the top with him. That your joy may be full. It's all about perspective. Who you are in Christ, rest in his strength, and the Father's love connection through Christ that causes you to be the victor, okay? It causes you to triumph, to causes you to have go forth and have great success. What is, there's a scripture in the Old Testament about, something about God that says, they, um, they shall be strong and do great exploits. God has decreed over your life that you will go forth here on earth and do great exploits. You're an explorer from the kingdom of heaven as his ambassador that comes in earth and you release treasures wherever you go. You leave gems, diamonds and rubies and things of life wherever you go, emeralds, but it's kingdom treasures that are eternal. And those paths in heaven, it says that when we're together, it's going to be like streets of gold and all those things paved with all these jewels. You're going to be walking on the jewels, not wearing them. <laughs> Does that tell you about your value? That he takes all these treasures and he puts you on top of them. All right. You are loved. You're incredible. Again, an FC Farwell. I'm a minister. I'd love to come and minister in your area. If you have a need in the prophetic, in the healing ministry, to walk who you are in Christ. Yeah, Robert, you are. Okay, Nala, my dog. Okay, she says, absolutely, I got to be in here. Oh, my gosh. There she is. You want to see? There she is. Okay, hey. She says, I got to get in on this. I tell you, she's something. Dogs are not man's best friend. Man is dog's best friend. <laughs> okay, Robert, you're a blessing. We have been given authority. Go forth. Do not let circumstances or conditions tell you the lie of the earth that you're defeated. Know that who you are in Christ, step out. You are more than that, more than a conqueror. That means you're above. It's a word that means you're above conquering. You can't be conquered in Christ. You cannot be conquered in Christ. So love you. Incredible day. So thank you, everybody showing up. Vicki, what, yes, what a blessing. Ann, Robert, Hope, Patty, Amy, uh, Pam, uh, Monique, and others. The thing doesn't show me, but I know there was a few of you others in here. And if I had a perfect memory, I'd remember them. I can't wait till I have that new body and new mind in Christ, and we will know each other even, even as he knows us. It's so incredible. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you for the hearts. Have an incredible weekend. You are loved beyond compare. And God has every resource you need in Christ for you. Love. Blessings.